Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm really excited to share this topic with you. I am first going to share my screen so you can see what I've got going on, though. There we go. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about how to find more happiness and have less anxiety. I think this is a topic that all of us can relate with. We'd love to have more happiness and maybe a little bit less anxiety. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Chris Rich and I am a certified life coach. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what that is in just a second. I uh, do general life coaching on any subject and I also coach people that are in mixed faith relationships. So people ask, when I tell people I'm a life coach, a lot of times people are like, what's that? What's a life coach? And it's such a great question. So let's get that out of the way to start off with. And a lot of times people will ask, what is the difference between a therapist and a life coach? So let's start with a therapist. So a therapist has patients that come to them because the patient feels like they are not functioning at their base level. This could be for a whole bunch of different reasons. Some of those reasons could include maybe they have undergone a significant life event, like a death, a divorce, a, maybe a loss of job, a move, something significant that they feel like because of this event, they're really struggling to function at their base level. Mental illness is another reason why people would see a therapist, that they're not feeling their best. Trauma, some event that has happened in the past, sometimes that will prevent people from functioning at their base level. And so they would go see a therapist for that reason. And usually a therapist works with their patients to deal with something that has happened in the past, not all the time, but that's generally, they wanna work through a past event so they can move forward and get to their base level. So a therapist has special training and tools to help their patients with these areas. I am so thankful for a good therapist. I'm thankful for my therapist that has helped me before. And one of the things that I really want to, to, address is if you are struggling with any of these things and you feel like you're not at your base level, I highly, highly recommend that you go find a trained professional that can help you get that help. If you had a toothache, you probably wouldn't hold off for a long time. You'd probably just call the dentist and go take care of it. And our mental health is, should be the same way. If some, if you're struggling with something, go get the help that you need because it's out there. Okay. So as far as a coach, what do I do? I am a certified life coach. So my clients come to me when they're already functioning at their base level. And it may be because they have the help of a therapist. So a life coach is a great addition to your mental health team. Um, my clients come to me because they are looking to improve some area of their life. And it may be that they just, they feel like they're in a rut. They, they, Maybe their kids are grown and they don't know what to do next, or they're just, they just feel like they're in a rut. Um, a lot of times my clients will come to me because they are experiencing a lot of a certain emotion. Maybe they feel like they're irritated all the time, or they're feeling a lot of resentment or another emotion that they don't like. And this isn't because of a mental illness. It's just, they just notice, yeah, I'm, I'm always irritated. Um, I help clients that are struggling in their relationships, whether that be with a partner or a, a child, a parent, a coworker, any sort of relationship problems. Uh, I help people with self-esteem. That's something I think all of us struggle with from time to time. So I, I work with people on self-esteem. Also goal setting. Sometimes people will come to me because they want help achieving their goals or even just coming up with goals that they can achieve and like weight loss or anything, any area of your life where you want to make an improvement. Um, as a life coach, 
most of my focus is on the present and the future. Sometimes things from the past will come up, but we're not working through the past. We're talking about like, okay, so that happened. What do you want to do now? What do you want to do today moving forward? So it's a different focus. And I like to think of a life coach as another set of eyes. I know when I have my own problems that I'm dealing with, I get focused and it's really hard to see other options. So a life coach can be a great help to give you some other ways of looking at things. I meet with a life coach every week. So coaching can be so helpful just to get some different perspectives. And um, another thing as a coach, there are some coaches that will tell you, you should eat this, you should do this exercise, you should say this, and they tell you what to do. I'm not that kind of coach. My philosophy is that you know what you should do, and you're the expert on you. And as a coach, I can help you figure out what that is for you and help you just show you some different options. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, um, let's talk about happiness. We are all in this pursuit of happiness. We're wanting to find more happiness and we're not exactly sure where to find it sometimes. And we have this idea that we should be happy all the time that because it feels good to be happy. I love being happy, but we have this idea that we should be happy all the time, that that's what's normal. But I want to offer that this idea that we should be happy all the time causes a lot of suffering. And let's talk about that for a minute. It's fascinating when, you know, like if your kids come home from a school and they are not happy, we always ask them, what's wrong? What happened? So we have this assumption that you should come home from school and be happy. <laughs> or like if I wake up in the morning and I don't feel my normal happy self, I'm like, okay, what's going on? I, I look at it as a problem and I ask myself what's wrong. So we, again, have this idea that we should be happy all the time. But I want to offer you something. No one is happy all of the time. And it's okay. Our goal in life is not to be 100% happy. And I want you to think about that. There are times in our lives where it would be inappropriate to be happy. Like if someone I love is grieving or maybe they died or something, I really don't want to be happy about that. So it is normal to not be happy all the time. And I also just want to throw it out there. I'm not talking, I'm in this webinar, I'm specifically talking about the regular ups and downs of life that we all experience. If you notice that you're, you feel like it's more than that, then once again, I, I suggest that you go see a therapist or a, someone that can help you with that. So, um, I, I love thinking of, of it this way. I really like listening to piano music. I don't play the piano, but I sure like to listen to it and watch people play the piano. And as people are playing it, you see them touching the white keys and the black keys and they play it soft and then they play it really loud or they might play it really fast. And then they slow down with it. There's this dynamics. There's this give and take. There's this opposition in the music. And that's what makes it beautiful is that all of those differences. And if you think about it, can you imagine what it would be like if someone just played the same note over and over and over and over without all those ups and downs and the, all the dynamics? I think you'd get sick of it pretty quick. And if life were always just happy, 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 we wouldn't realize that we were happy. We wouldn't know how good we had it because we wouldn't have anything to compare it to. So I like to call this concept 50-50. And I'm going to tell you, this is one of my very favorite coaching tools that I use on myself all day long, just about every day. I love this tool. And I want to give you some examples of how this works. So with our emotions as a human being, the human experience, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, the human experience is not to be happy 100% of the time. You're not going to find a pie chart where it's just happy. 
not very realistic. The human experience is a 50-50 experience with our emotions. Half the time you are going to feel positive emotions, which are wonderful. Half the time you're not, you're going to feel negative emotions. And I just, I want to show you some of these emotions. We have a very limited emotional vocabulary a lot of the time. And I just want to show you some of these positive emotions. You may feel happy, proud, connected, content, eager, optimistic, hopeful, playful, confident. So those are just some of the emotions that you might feel as part of this 50% of the positive emotions. Okay. And then on the other side, I've got 50% of the time, I'm going to feel negative emotions. And those emotions could include, but are not limited to <laughs> grief. You may feel lonely, embarrassed, insignificant, disappointed, anxious, bored, stressed, guilty. So these are, when we look at all of these emotions, this is the whole human experience that half the time we are going to feel emotions that feel fantastic, that we love to feel. And half the time we're not, and I don't even like to call them positive and negative. I do, but it's part, part of the human experience is to feel these emotions that don't feel good. So if you are feeling this whole range of emotion, you are in good company, my friend just like the rest of the humans. Okay, speaking of humans, there another way that we can apply this 50-50 tool is to ourselves. And I am a 50-50 human. Let me explain what I mean by that. Half the time, I am a rock star. I show up and I do all the things that I wish I would, that things that I, I feel good about. Sometimes I a lot of times I show up and I say the things I want to say, and I'm kind and gentle and loving, and I show up with confidence and I make really good choices and I just feel amazing. Part of the time, I'm a rock star. The other part of the time, I'm a hot mess. I say things I wish I hadn't. I do things I wish I hadn't done. I don't think about things and I show up in a way that is not my best self. So half the time I'm a rock star, half the time I'm a hot mess. And that is also a normal human experience that we're not, we weren't sent here to earth to be perfect robots. I'm going to have, sometimes I'm going to be awesome and sometimes I'm going to be awful. So that is being a 50, 50 human. The beautiful thing about this is when I can have that space and grace for myself then I can look at myself and be like, Ooh, yeah, today's not going so well. And instead of beating myself up, cause I have this expectation that I should be perfect. Then I can kind of look at it like, Ooh, today you're kind of a hot mess. What's going on. And I can have compassion for myself. And then I realize, like, Ooh, that's really not how I wanted to do that. And then I can go and apologize or I can go and fix the mistake I made. So I love this concept because it helps me to show up more of the time as a better version of myself when I recognize like, yeah, I'm 50, 50. I also love this tool because I can apply it to the humans around me. My husband is a 50, 50 husband. A lot of the time he shows up and he's amazing and wonderful. And sometimes he shows up and he drives me bonkers, probably just like your spouse, <laughs> my kids. They're 50, 50 kids. A lot of times they're obedient and kind and respectful. And sometimes they just aren't, they don't listen and they they're normal kids. They are 50, 50 people. I can apply this when I'm driving down the street. If someone cuts me off in traffic, instead of freaking out, I can remember, Ooh, I'm a 50, 50 driver. I sure do my best, but sometimes they do cut someone off and they're probably just like me. And so I don't have to let it ruin my day when someone doesn't respond the way that I want them to, because I have, I can have compassion for them and grace for them. So I love that concept. Um, I can also apply 50, 50 to a time period, like my day. And it's fascinating because a lot of times when something doesn't go well in our day, let's say that you burn dinner. 
or maybe you had a disagreement with your spouse, it's really easy to think like, oh, that was the worst day ever, or that was a waste of a day. It's really easy to just focus on those bad parts. And it's interesting, our brain main job is to keep us alive and keep us safe. So it is going to be looking for danger. It's going to be looking for problems because that helps us to survive and stay safe. The problem though, is my brain's always looking for problems and it sometimes forgets that there are good things going on. So if I look at the rest of my day, like the part where I got to read my book and I got the house all cleaned, I went to work I phoned my best friend and we had a good chat. I went for a walk in the sunshine and I got a text from my daughter. My brain forgets about those things. And so I want to just point it out and remind myself, instead of it being a horrible day, that is it possible that it was a 50-50 day? I love this. I love graphs. And I like to look at, so that last day that I shared with you, I think maybe it wasn't 50, 50, but it was 10, 90 and it was only 10% of the day was bad. And the rest of the day was awesome and amazing. So I want to remind my brain and 50, 50 is not an exact science. Some days are 90, 10, it might be 20, 80, 80, 20. There's, it's just this concept that there is going to be opposition in all things that we're going to have some good parts and we're going to have some hard parts. And I just, I love this. And it's interesting because the eye sees what the brain looks for. So if I have this thought in my mind that this is the worst day ever, guess what? I'm going to find a lot of evidence for why that's true. Cause my brain, I've given my brain that job to my brain doesn't want to be wrong. So if I'm thinking this is the worst day, it's going to find evidence for why that's true. So if I can give it a different job instead of this is a 50-50 day, I don't even have to go to it's a fantastic day. But if I go to it's a 50-50 day, then my, I can, my brain will look for evidence of that too. And uh, the last way I like to use this 50-50 tool, I can look at an experience as a 50-50 experience. Let's say you're going on a family vacation. And of course, you're going to plan for everything to go well, and you're going to prepare and do everything you need to. But I like going into a situation, not being pessimistic that, well, it's going to be 50-50, it's not going to go well. I like to go into it just knowing that it probably will be. And so when someone forgot their plane ticket or were late for a flight or someone's luggage is lost, instead of losing all hope, I can just remember like, Yep. It's 50, 50 that part of the things are going great. And there's a couple snafus and it's okay. So the beautiful thing about this tool, when we're not so negative about the negative in our life, we experience more positive. That's a huge way to create more happiness, my friends. So I just, I love this concept and I invite you to try using it in your life. It's a really good one. And if you have questions about any of this, I would love for you to reach out and um, we can talk about how 50-50 can work for you. Okay, so switching gears just a little bit. Most of us think that our circumstances in our lives create our happiness or our sadness. And I wanna talk about that for just a minute. And a lot of times we have this idea, I'll be happy when I finish my test or when I've paid for my child's tuition or when I graduate, I'll be happy when I lose that last 15 pounds. I'll be happy when I'm done training for this marathon. I will be happy when I've paid off my debt or I'll be happy when I've earned X amount of dollars, or maybe I'll be happy when I'm finally in my dream home. We do this all the time. We put our happiness on hold because we think that our circumstance will make us happy. But I want to show you something. I want to give you an example. So I live in New England and Sometimes when we have a snowy day, the superintendent will call and say, 
school is canceled for today. So I want you to think about that for a second. If you received a phone call in the morning that school had been canceled, I want you to think about how that would make you feel. And one of the things that I want to share with you, it's not the call that you're getting from the superintendent that is making you feel anything. It is your thought about that call. So I want to give you some examples. So um, let's start, let's say maybe you felt angry. Well, you're going to feel angry because you're thinking a thought like my plans are ruined. I was going to lunch with my girlfriend and now I can't or something like that. Uh, you may feel excited if you're thinking a thought like, yay, now I don't have to go to work. You might feel gratitude if you're thinking it's my lucky day. And obviously this depends on, we all have different situations, but our thoughts about our circumstances influence how we feel. Uh, maybe you have an emotion like dread because you're thinking this is going to be a waste of a day. My kids are going to be fighting all day. And then your brain goes looking for evidence of why that's true. Or maybe you'll feel peace. You look out the window and you think that snow is absolutely beautiful. So you feel peace. Or you might feel irritated because you have a thought like winter is the worst. And I have to, I'm going to fess up right here. I had years where that was my, I just did not like winter. And I kept noticing that I just, I would have all these thoughts. I was irritated and angry and I was dreading it. And I just thought I was that kind of person that I just didn't like winter. But then when I started looking at my thoughts about it, I was able to think about that. Do I really want to feel this way? And I'm not going to say that I love it all the time, but I can see it a lot different than I used to. Okay. Um, so as a little reminder there, life circumstances don't create our happiness. Our thoughts about those circumstances do. And here is a life hack right here. If you want more happiness in your life, practice thinking happier thoughts. It's really that simple. I also want to point out that is, once again, it is not my goal to be happy all the time. I don't have to be Pollyanna. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I, I, if I'm noticing that I'm struggling in an area, I can look at how I'm thinking about it. That's a big thing that I do as a life coach is I help people look at how they're thinking and how that's creating their emotions. And if they want to keep feeling that way and thinking that way, awesome. Anyone can think and feel however they want. But if you want some help changing it, that is one of the things that I do with my clients is we look at what you're thinking and how that is affecting how you feel, which affects what you do, which affects the results that you create in your life. Okay. So going back to what we talked about a little bit earlier that, so I'm not going to be happy all the time. And there are going to be times when I do experience negative emotion. It's part of the human experience to have it about half the time. So let's talk about the times when we are not happy. And I want to focus specifically on anxiety in these examples, but the things that I'm going to share with you, we can use with any negative emotion, sadness, grief, irritation, disappointment, any of those emotions that, that don't feel so good. So if we think that we need to be happy all the time, like most of us do, negative emotion feels like a really big problem. Like, oh, I've got anxiety. Something's, something's wrong. There's a problem here. But what I want to show you when we have a negative emotion and we feel like it's a problem and we resist it and we think, oh, this is not the time for me to have anxiety. This couldn't be worse. Maybe you're sitting on a plane or something and you just feel super anxious and you're thinking, oh, I can't do this right now. This is horrible. What happens when we resist our emotions like that? What we resist persists. It gets bigger. It doesn't go anywhere when I just pretend that it's not there and try to make it go away in an unwelcoming way. And when we have anxiety, the interesting thing about anxiety 
is so often we get anxious because we are feeling the emotion of anxiety. And that, my friends, is pretty similar to throwing gasoline on a fire. If I'm anxious about my anxiety, it's just going to, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And we learned when we were younger that if we're on fire, we want to stop, drop and roll. I don't want you to do that with your anxiety. So I'm going to cross out roll and I'm going to teach you a different way to do it, but this might help you remember. So I want you to stop, drop, and instead of rolling, I want you to breathe. And let me explain what I mean by these really quick. When I'm experiencing anxiety, I want to stop and name it and just say, yeah, I am feeling anxious right now, or I'm noticing the emotion of anxiety. I want to stop and identify that this is how I feel. And just this one step alone can be very, very helpful when we do that because it's, we're validating to ourselves that, yeah, this is how I feel. And that's really important. So often we don't do that. So I want you to stop and identify how you feel. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to drop out of your head because you're going to have all sorts of thoughts. And remember how we talked about our thoughts create our emotions? Well, my thoughts can create anxiety. And so I want to get out of my head and, and quit thinking all the thoughts that are going on. And I want to drop into my body and I want to notice what is going on in my body. So I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling anxiety, my face gets red and my heart starts beating. My hands will sweat. My stomach might feel uncomfortable. Maybe I notice that I'm like tight And so I just want to observe what is going on in my body, not trying to make it go away, just letting it be there, letting it just making space for the anxiety. So I've dropped into my body. And then the last thing is I just want to breathe into it. Just some good. Just some good deep breaths and just let that anxiety be there. And I'm going to tell you, I wish I could tell you that it would feel amazing. It doesn't. No one likes the feeling of anxiety, but if I can just let it be there and make a safe spot for that anxiety, a beautiful thing happens. When I allow my anxiety to be there with compassion and, and as a welcome guest, a beautiful thing happens. That anxiety goes from being big and it dissipates, it gets smaller and smaller. It may not go away completely, but if I can just let it be there, I will notice a change in what's going on with that. Unfortunately, I can't promise you that the anxiety is not going to come back. In fact, I'm going to guess that it does come back. But when I can do this, I just, I go throughout, I go through that process again. I like to think of anxiety or our emotions, like a wave on the ocean. In fact, I've got a, a, a painting of a wave right behind me that sometimes they come in waves and it might just be like a little bit and then it goes back. And then sometimes I've got big waves of anxiety, the kind of waves that knock you down and throw you down on the, on the beach. So we're going to have different, um, different times when anxiety is going to feel stronger, or maybe it's not so much, but this tool can be helpful in those times. Um, another thing I just, I want to point out is so often we make ourselves wrong for how we feel. We think, Ooh, I shouldn't be feeling anxious. I should be over this by now. This isn't that big of a deal. What's your problem? We beat ourselves up and we make ourselves wrong for how we feel. And that my friend is not useful. I like to think of it. If I had a a friend or maybe one of my kids came to me and they were struggling with anxiety how would I show up for them? Well, I would go give them a hug and I would let them know that I know right now this is hard, but it's going to be okay. I would be there for them. I would reassure them. And I certainly wouldn't tell them to snap out of it. This is, this is a problem. I would be there with compassion and love and put my arms around them. And I want you to do that same thing for yourself. When we can have compassion for ourselves and hold that open space for our anxiety, it will get smaller. 
And I want to remind you that it is okay to not be okay. In fact, about half the time, you're not going to feel okay. But when we can make that, when we are not negative about our negative emotions, that we just, it's just part of life that makes space for us to feel a lot more happiness or other positive emotions. Because our emotions are not a problem. It's part of the human experience. And I like to think so often we think of our emotions as an emergency. I can't be anxious. I can't be angry. I can't. You fill in the blank. We turn into a firefighter that's trying to get rid of that emotion. And I don't need to do that. If I can just allow the emotion and just sit with it, I'm not off yelling at someone or slamming doors, or I'm not off trying to cover up my emotions by overeating or over shopping or making choices that aren't going to help me or resisting my emotions. I can just sit with it. And I, I like to think of handling my emotions like a detective, just watching what's going on, what's happening in my body. When I stop, drop and breathe, just observing what's happening and with compassion and, and, and asking myself like, okay, what, what are you thinking that's causing this anxiety? What you probably have a good reason and it's okay. And I'm here and it's a safe spot for, I create a safe place for me to feel my emotions as a detective instead of a firefighter. Okay. My friends, that is everything that I have for today's webinar. I just want to let you know that if what I shared with you in this webinar resonated with you, that there are a couple other places that you can find me and get more help from me. The first place is you can go to my website, chrisrichcoaching.com, all one word. On my website, I've got a bunch of different tools. I have a blog. I've got a lot of great resources on my website that you can find. I also have a podcast. I mentioned earlier, I am a general life coach that coaches on any topic. I am also, I also work with people that are in mixed faith relationships. So my podcast is called the mixed faith relationship podcast. I do. I, it definitely is for people in this space, but if you're not in this space, I still invite you to have a listen because the examples that I use, you can just insert your own examples and get a lot of great coaching tools that will help you in any area of your life. I am also on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. So you can find me at Chris Rich Coaching. Um, Also, if you live in my area, I am happy to come to any of your events as a speaker. I really enjoy public speaking and I would be happy to do that if you live in my area. Um, So reach out to me. My information is all on my website. If you have any questions, I would love for you to reach out to me. And um, I, I love this work of helping people to manage their emotions that come up for them because they will come up. I love teaching people about their emotions and helping them to create the life that they want. So if any of this resonated with you, I would love for you to reach out on my, go to my website, and I would be happy to do a free mini session with you where you can come and get coached and see if this is something that you would be interested in. So I so appreciate you being here and please let me know if you have any questions and that's all I have for you today. Thanks, my friends.